Good morning and good evening, everyone. God bless you and thank you for being present with this wonderful broadcast service from Cape Town, South Africa. I am David Christopher Lewis, and today is April 2nd, 2016. Early this morning, beloved Serapis Bay came to me at about 5.30 a.m. local time here in Montana and dictated a beautiful message to me, which I would like to read to you as directly coming straight from his heart for all of us, both in the Heart Center movement and initiates throughout the world, to give us a teaching that I pray will edify your hearts and minds, bring solace to your souls, and bring uplift to your entire being. So we will simply be still for another minute or so before I begin the reading of this beautiful message from the Hierophant of Luxor, the Chohan of the Fourth Ray, the White Ray of the Ascension Flame, whose retreat is over Luxor, Egypt. Beloved initiates of the sacred fire, I come to you this night from Luxor to deliver to your minds, souls, and hearts instruction on truth, information that I pray will be for you important on your sacred journey of light. And this instruction may be disseminated far and wide as you see fit to all who resonate with this movement and its message as well as our greater message of the universal white brotherhood for the earth and its evolutions at this time i deal with the issue of the preparation of your spiritual home in the heaven world. Remember, the Master Jesus has spoken unto you and said that he would go to prepare that place for you or in the Father's kingdom. There are many mansions. You know that as universal spirits, your eternal home is the universe itself. And yet, blessed ones, as spirit sparks of fire, 
live, move, and have your being in the Mater Plains. You have that sacred space in heaven already manifest at a certain dimension of being, prepared by God and by the living Christ for you, that you may rise into in consciousness, that you may indeed abide within during your times of meditation, prayer, introspection, and communion with the heart of God. And this sacred space truly is your eternal home of light. In one sense, this place is non-local, for it is a state of beingness as an essence recognized by you as a divine individual one with God and it has a unique qualification of light based on your consciousness your application of the teachings of truth that you have made over many lifetimes for your free will experience upon earth considering the master's words how does jesus himself prepare this place for us what truly is the spiritual abode are we too involved in some way in its preparation with the great master of light do we have input into what our place or habitation will be, will look like, will feel like based on our personal predilections? Or is our heavenly abode built in advance by the hands of the Almighty? And will we lovingly simply accept it in humility? as our new home of course each is involved in the process of both building and co-creating the sacred place just as you would be involved in the designing of your ideal home upon earth you know that i am as the Hierophant of Luxor, an architect of the spirit, of light and divine fire, and one of the classes that I teach at Luxor deals with this very subject, the designing of our heavenly abode, based on sacred geometrical formulas and alignment with our own individualized perfected pattern of being, our keynote, our frequency, our vibration. All have typically experienced numerous lifetimes upon earth and lived in all manner of civilizations, cultures, and peoples with their specific types of structures and habitations. Many have been very simple and affordable and allowed for a minimal amount of outer protection, security, and comfort. For dearest hearts, most of your time has been engaged in and spent within the matrices of life itself. with all of its activities upon the earth. During other lives, many of us have lived in more complex and ornate abodes with highly stylized architectural buildings, artistically created, 
with colorful decor, great ornamentation and details and embellishments that often symbolically portray various iconic cultural figures, themes rendered through many different media. In heaven you see, blessed ones, all can choose the type of mansion with its rooms that each one desires to have as that one's heavenly abode, which we come for spiritual rest and relaxation, meditation upon the eternal spirit and divine light, and simply abiding in a state of oneness to humility. Within the various etheric cities of light and retreats of the ascended hierarchy, we can actually have a number of homes or abodes based on how universal our work is within various heavenly committees, councils, communities, and universities. The living universal Christ, the anointed one, works with our own Christed essence, our higher self, discern based on our spiritual mission and vision what our sacred space of love and higher octaves will be like, will look like, will manifest as. We co-create and design this heavenly habitation and offer our own creative input. And it is coalesced around what we have assimilated of Earth's cultures that we've lived within upon Earth, and it is also based on our higher preferences in communion with our source. Just as we would consult an architect, a builder, an interior designer in planning our homes, so we consult those who are spiritually aware of all of the cosmic laws and formulas involved in this process of co-creating our spiritual retreat of light. What Jesus meant in his statement was that he was laying a certain foundation of light as the living Christ within the holy city and even within numerous cities of divine light in the heaven world, for all who would spiritually work to become one with God again, who would work to have restored their natural place of light in spirit for eternality. Jesus, as the avatar of Pisces, prepares the estate consults with cosmic forces and divine builders, even the Elohim themselves, in performing this alchemy on behalf of the evolutions whom he serves. This loving work is his joy. When he sees that we are making progress to the point where our time has come for our eternal wedding, with spirit, we must have our home ready, just like a newly married couple plans where to live after their nuptials and the ceremony of their oneness is completed. You may be aware that I, Serapis, was the architect of the Great Pyramid even as El Moria was the master builder and mason. I have continued to architect spiritual mansions of light with the master Jesus and other great masters of light. And we have worked assiduously to help design and fashion that which is everlasting, which is incorruptible, which neither rust nor moth corrupt, can touch or cause decay. 
that which is composed of crystalline light, spiritual fire, godly grace itself. Now our major work is the building of our deathless solar body, our Merkaba light body, our everlasting universal sphere of beingness, which we fashion through divine love as we employ God's virtues in our lives. Yet concurrently there is the alchemy of the establishment of this sacred abode and the higher firmament of heaven. that directly corresponds to our own Merkaba. As we self-construct this vehicle of light by and through which we can travel anywhere within the cosmos, within certain parameters of cosmic law, we do indeed simultaneously build our divine estate, our mansion in the sky, because as we employ light, color, sound, fragrance, frequency, and the formulas of the higher senses, we coalesce in the divine world these essences of spirit within our ever-present mansion of beingness, our heavenly home. Remember, dearest ones, that it is God's great joy great pleasure indeed to give us the kingdom, the keys to our own kingdom of light. However, this can only occur as we master the sciences and arts of humility, purity, and oneness through obedience to God's laws, God's holy will, wisdom, and love, as we reunite with God's heart. So begin, dearest ones, to consider this dynamic in your life. Feel free to soar with the seraphim in consciousness, to perceive within the holy city that sacred space that you will from this day forward consciously enter into to co-create with great masters of light that divine abode. See it as already realized in one sense and yet also established again and again through your higher consciousness in times of silent stillness and meditation, embellished with the greater nuances of light that you are gleaning from the spiritual worlds. Consider every sacred formula that you utilize in collaboration with the great Shohans of the Rays, the great masters of light, within the context of this cooperative work of establishing the greater kingdom of light in the heaven worlds. Long ago, you were invited to attend the sessions within the retreats of the Chohans of the Rays and the Maha Chohan for certain periods of time as you consciously ask to attend them in your finer bodies before you retire at night and then writing down the memories of your experiences within the retreats upon awakening in the morning. This exercise many of you fulfilled with great joy and intent and you received, in addition to instruction from us, the sense of oneness, of true brother-sisterhood with universal white brotherhood and the ascended hosts. 
you receive these nuances of light deep within your being that played upon the fine, sensitive instrument of your soul as you continue on your path of oneness with God, accessing through these streams of awareness great light, great energy that have even seen you through to the present moment on your path to pass your initiations, to work the great work of the ages, to fulfill your divine destiny, your mission upon earth. Now the Chohans come, as I speak on their behalf, to again invite you to attend these sessions, as well as to consider this new dynamic of the building of your own holy temple of light in heaven. For many of you are qualifying for your ascension or have already done so on the inner. And there comes a time when we step forward to initiate you into a higher order of light. And you must have your sacred place prepared at that time. For dearest ones, many souls upon earth may come to your abode just as they come to the retreats of the Chohans and other great masters. They may come to visit you in spirit as they sleep at night to receive understanding, compassion, love, kindness, and all of the virtues that you emulate and that you engage in honoring and exemplifying through your life lived to the glory of God just as you invite friends, family, co-workers, and others who you newly meet upon life to your homes for tea, for nourishment, for rest from travel. So in the sacred space of light in the heaven world, you may invite souls who also require that refreshment of spirit, your place. So consider having an area within your mansion in the sky where friends and newly quickened ones may come to receive the ministration of your hearts and souls, the nourishment of your beings, but that which you, as an ascending one, employ in assisting them on their own sacred journey. As many of you have already co-created in one sense what this sacred space will look like in previous exercises within this movement, now with this new understanding, you may wish to expand them, increase their reach, their radiance. Your home actually may be a great property of light, a retreat center itself, with wonderful opportunities for friends and even your own mentors to come to nurture you as you nurture others. As you engage in this exercise, you can even co-create these properties and structures, temples, and homes physically upon earth. And by engaging in this activity in spirit, we will lend the momentum of our light bodies our essences, your physical co-creative work upon earth. For many of you do desire to have communities of light upon the earth, places where you can gather and share the teaching, the experience of oneness with God through divine love. Yes, blessed ones, God is great. 
and heaven is not so different from earth. Yet it is more refined, more rarefied, more glorious, more immaculate, more radiant, and able to hold that light without dissipation or any darkness whatsoever entering into the equation of the experience within the heaven world of your soul's journey with God. You may begin at the beginning with the Master El Moria Khan and ascending in spirit to Darjeeling for a fortnight or more, and then moving on to the retreat of the Master, Lord Lanto himself, to receive the ministrations of his great wisdom teaching from the East that surely can be employed anywhere and everywhere upon earth for the illumination of souls, the ensconcing of their spirits with that great teaching that is so essential in this hour. Moving on to the beloved Venetian, Paul, then to my home, then to that of Hilarion, Lady Master Nada, St. Germain himself. Moving through those rays, you will have the ministering of your soul within them, the understanding that each Chohan provides. And then when all is employed, great magnificence of these seven rays, traveling to Sri Lanka, when you enter the sacred retreat of the Maha Chohan, you will be the great recipient of his cosmic streams of divine love, the harmonic radiations of pure, divine, undefiled compassion that he emanates and provides as a source of nourishment to every soul. One day, you, beloved, may move up in consciousness to be a Chohan, or a master within a certain university of the spirit, whom many look to for guidance, support, love, and tutelage. So prepare wisely that sacred place of light. For as your mission is ongoing in heaven, so there is an ongoingness, a spiritual evolution of all souls of light, root races and peoples and cultures. And in this great Antakarana of the Spirit, the radiance of heaven grows as souls ascend, and one day the completion of this alchemy will manifest whereby earth is subsumed into heaven, and all pain, sorrow, darkness is no more wiped clean, and earth is refreshed. And that original spiritual vigor of light, of its original creation, by divine fire. Oh, blessed hearts, there is so much more that I could share with you in this hour. Yet more will be transferred unto you on the inner. As you contemplate these concepts, as you meditate with us, as you perceive with finer eyes the radiance and graces of heaven's great glories. And as you witness to these truths, these teachings, 
these universal principles and values of light and love. Now attend to the details of your lives. Win your victory through fruitful action, through intrepid courage, oneness of heart, mind, and spirit to fulfill the sacred dream of your soul. Move forward, ever forward, on your path of light. And one day when I greet you at Luxor, or wherever you choose to ascend from, there will be the new fire burning within your eyes and breast, your mind and soul. And that fire of the ascension will assist you in the final assimilation of your eternal nature, your God presence, as you rise in oneness and that divine estate of pure beingness in eternal joy. In this hour, I initiate new spirals of light within Cape Town, Johannesburg, and throughout all of South Africa, and elsewhere upon the African continent, where you have called me forth, asked me to speak, and part of my witness and delivery is the initiatic path itself. Be prepared for change, transformation, and evolution, dearest ones. For as you are prepared for the new day, so it will alight in your midst. So we will stand forth to bless you, encourage you, to urge you onward, to goad you ever unto your oneness with your source. I am Serapis Bay. It is a great new day of oneness and spirit. Rise, blessed ones, and fulfill all in God as godly and beautiful ones. I thank you. <laughs>